Have you ever wondered how we get natural gas or oil from deep underground rock formations? It doesn't just bubble to the surface like in the old cartoons. There's a highly complex and controversial process behind it, and it's called fracking. But what exactly is fracking? How does it work? And why do people have such strong feelings about it? Well, that's exactly what we're exploring today, right here on History of Simple Things. Fracking begins long before any rock is fractured. The first step is all about finding the right location. Geologists study rock formations, often using seismic surveys, kind of like taking an ultrasound of the Earth, to figure out where gas or oil might be trapped deep underground, usually thousands of feet below the surface. Once a suitable site is identified, the energy company sets up a drilling rig. These rigs are massive structures, and they serve as the gateway to the shale or rock layer where the gas or oil is trapped. Now here's where things start getting technical, but don't worry, we'll keep it simple. The first part of drilling is vertical, meaning the well is drilled straight down into the earth, often going as deep as 10,000 feet or more. That's roughly the height of eight Empire State Buildings stacked on top of each other. But here's the twist, literally. Once the drill reaches the depth of the shale rock formation, it starts to turn sideways. This is called horizontal drilling. It's a game changer because it allows companies to access more of the resource from a single surface location. Imagine you're inserting a straw straight into a layered cake then turning it to move sideways inside one layer without disturbing the others. That's kind of how horizontal drilling works. As the drilling continues, steel pipes called casing are inserted into the well bore to keep it from collapsing. Then cement is pumped in between the casing and the rock wall to seal off the well and prevent any leakage into groundwater sources. This step is crucial for protecting the environment and ensuring structural integrity. Think of it like lining a tunnel with concrete so that nothing leaks in or out. Now comes the actual fracking part, short for hydraulic fracturing. After drilling and casing, the well is perforated using a tool that creates tiny holes in the horizontal part of the pipe. These holes provide pathways for the gas or oil to escape. Next, a high-pressure mixture of water, sand, and chemicals is pumped down the well. The pressure is so intense that it causes the surrounding shale rock to crack, hence fracturing. These fractures are often only a few millimeters wide, but they extend hundreds of feet through the rock. So why add sand and chemicals? The sand helps prop open the fractures, keeping them from closing once the pressure is reduced. The chemicals serve various purposes like reducing friction, killing bacteria, and preventing corrosion in the pipes. After the fracturing is complete, the pressure is reduced and the fracturing fluid begins to flow back up the well, along with the now freed natural gas or oil. This is called flowback. The energy company then separates the gas or oil from the water and other byproducts at the surface. The gas or oil is collected, processed, and eventually sent off to power plants, homes, factories, or refineries. Meanwhile, the used fracking fluid is either treated and reused, injected deep underground, or stored in line pits or tanks. One of the reasons fracking became so popular is its efficiency. A single horizontal well can produce far more than a traditional vertical one, and it reduces the need for multiple drilling sites. That means less surface disruption per barrel of oil or cubic foot of gas. In fact, fracking is a major reason the U.S. became one of the top oil and gas producers in the world. The technique unlocked resources that were previously considered inaccessible or too expensive to extract.
But it's not all good news. Fracking has its fair share of environmental concerns, and they're not to be dismissed. First, there's the issue of water usage. A single well can use millions of gallons of water, and in areas where water is scarce, this can be a huge problem. Second, there's worry about groundwater contamination if the casing or cementing fails. While the industry maintains that proper construction prevents this, accidents and leaks have occurred. Third, the wastewater from fracking can contain not just chemicals, but also naturally occurring radioactive materials brought up from deep underground. Disposing of this safely is a major challenge. And lastly, fracking has been linked to earthquakes, especially in areas where wastewater is injected into deep disposal wells. These quakes are usually minor, but they raise legitimate safety concerns. Because of these concerns, fracking is highly regulated in many countries and states. Governments require permits, environmental assessments, and regular inspections. But regulation varies widely depending on where you are. At the same time, energy companies are working on technological improvements, like using less water, better chemicals, and real-time monitoring systems to detect leaks or failures early. Some are even experimenting with waterless fracking techniques using gas-based alternatives. The goal is to make fracking safer, cleaner, and more efficient without losing the economic benefits it brings. So what's the takeaway? Fracking is a powerful tool that has transformed how we access energy. It has helped lower prices, created jobs, and shifted global energy dynamics. But it's not without costs, especially to the environment and local communities. Understanding how it works, the drilling, the pressure, the chemicals, the risks, helps us see past the headlines and get to the real issues. Whether you support it or not, fracking is a big part of our energy future, at least for now. So next time someone mentions fracking in a conversation, you'll know what they're talking about. It's not just cracking rocks. It's a complex, high-tech operation with real consequences, both good and bad. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.